to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg. An angel is in our midst. Her name is Layla Hathaway. Hi. Right. Yes, that Hathaway. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, wow. Um, so we have a mutual friend. Yeah. Uh, we know each other through our mutual friend, Brian Alexander Morgan. Is that how we know each other? Yeah. Wow. From re you recording in Sacramento, California. Oh, my gosh. Back in the, in the, in the 40s? <laughs> yeah, in the 40s. From when Brian lived in Sac. Sac, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's like 1992. Yes. Three. Yes. When he was writing SWV records yeah. and working with Martha Wash yeah. and like all of those things. Um, but you're here today because you have a duet with your father. I Donny do. Hathaway this Christmas. Yeah. Um, why is this happening now? Well, I mean, chiefly they found something in the vault that, um, you know, there's, there are all these vaults that don't exist, but actually exist somewhere. And they found a demo I don't even know if you call it a demo. I would call it like a, a rehearsal tape of mm. the record. And so he's playing piano and it's slower. And as soon right. as they told me that they had something, I wanted to hear what it was. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, this is it. This is a duet. It's, you know, it's totally, it's made It's very music. different than the original. It's it's or, actually very much the same, just a different vibe. It's got the, it. It's the thing you know and you love and you've heard every year. Since birth, but slightly different. Right, right. So it's interesting. Like, yeah, that. I was just listening to it. And I was like, this is like a live version of something. Yeah, like I didn't. Yeah. yeah, it's piano instead of rose. The instrumentation is a little different, but. So, um, who's they? When you say they found it, they, um, you know, insert uh, record conglomerate here. Right. Label people that own masters that artists do not own or have control over. Um, you know, they keep your stuff forever. That's right. And when you speak of these vaults that are not there but are there, I often hear this from songwriters. They're like, yo, where are my masters? And people are like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh. Or I'm looking for reels from 1970, oh, yeah. whatever. Oh, we don't know where those are. We can't yeah. find them. And then A lot of that stuff is archived, and it's in places. I mean, I had a situation with the last record that I made, though, where it's in your contract for a lot of people now because everything is digital, they don't want to store those CDs or records any longer. They want you to pay to buy them back or pay to have them destroyed. Mm. Wow. Which is super... That's crazy. Counterintuitive. <laughs> and I know it's contractual nuance, but like as family, direct family, you have no access to, no, to this? No, no, you don't. Unless someone's kind enough. Unless someone's kind enough. I mean, I, I think there are exceptions to every rule. Yeah. But generally speaking, artists that are not at that upper echelon don't really have control of much of any of their IP, any of their intellectual property. Especially from back then. Absolutely. 60s, 70s, particularly right. artists of color. Right, right, right. They had really no... So so they, re they the label reached out. What label is your dad on? Um, he was at Atlantic in okay. Echo. Uh, oh, Echo, because I have because I have um, I have the forty five of and you this see Christmas that little yellow in my for, in my jukebox. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the it's the promo. It's the white yeah. one, but with the Echo. Oh, cool. So so they reach out and say, uh -huh. "Hey, we found this," and then do they say we'd like to do something with no, you, or they, do you say it? They reach out and say, "Hey, we have something. You want to hear it?" Um, and I say, "Absolutely." And then the moment I heard it, I knew what I could do with it. So. That must have been exciting, though. What was, was the experience like of sitting there and hearing something new from your, it's, it's your like dad's a, most, I guess your dad's biggest record? Probably his most iconic record, I think, maybe. Definitely the most covered record. Yeah. Right. Right. And um, definitely the most, I would say, most played on an annual basis. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Without You're a doubt. You're right. You're right. It's kind of a like having a new conversation with my father, in yeah. a way. So every few years, they come out with like a new re-release, and it has like... An outtake of something, you know, from the famous vault. So every time, it's kind of like a new conversation for me. Right. I'm really thankful for that. Well, that's nice. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Cool. Layla's the coolest, by the way. Y'all got to know. What? She's on Twitter. She talks <laughs> she shit. Is. She'll retweet our shit. She's... Twitter sucks now so bad. Oh, I know. Wow. I might leave. I'm, it's I'm terrible. Are you still on there? I, I don't. I don't. Is he I, on I, there? I, I, I'm on there. I, you know me. I'm only. She sees my. Sh I'm only did, on there to yeah. argue and talk shit. And but I mean, I, I, I half mean. the people I follow are gone. A lot of them are not posting. My timeline is full of old stuff. It's it's a. Wait, where'd they go? They just quit. Twitter. They left. They just stopped. Tweeting. Because of Elon Musk. 
I guess so. Or just because they just had enough. It of- just sucks. It's, it's just, also what he's allowing. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of crap up there. There's not a lot of nuance. The comedy is basically gone. Right. The actual engine of the thing is broken. It's like the Island of Misfit Toys in there. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> for good reason uh, we're using the Elon thing as a reason to be done with it. But really, it's been shitty for a while. It's been shitty. It's been shitty for a while. But right now, it is specifically shitty because it doesn't really work like it used to. Mm. Right, it changed the there. function. Yeah, it's bit, not. Yeah. It's not what it was. And then, then the whole verification thing is wild. And yeah, I get like blue check mark uh, comments all day. And, long. and you're like, who is this blue check? Yeah, and everybody is somebody. Right, that's everybody. Fine. Everybody is a star, but you have, you know, <laughs> but uh, you have 38 followers. Yeah, you have 242 followers, Everybody's and a star. okay. <laughs> so, um, your your dad's legacy uh, is, is something that you, I mean. Vocally, you make sure that the the Hathaway name is where it needs to be because you're an amazing vocalist Thank as you. well. Thank you. Uh, and and have your own hits and your own. Uh, but here it seems like this last couple years, the hip hop world and people are really making sure that your name is on right. Re- like your name is on records a lot now. I'm seeing featuring Layla Hathaway and I have been always though. I have always been like. Uh... I used to think of myself as like the Nicki Minaj of singers. I was everywhere. I was on a whole lot of records all across the spectrum. And I tend to be like that every year. I find something cool or something cool Ah, finds me. So, yeah, but I have been really in the last few years like Kendrick and Snoop and Dre and, you know, Quick and... That's been and amazing. had you always had those relationships? Yeah, or absolutely. The, and and so what's what's happening in the last few years? That's like, yo, we need get Layla to the studio. We need them vocals. I've been doing it the whole time. I'm just like super under the. I'm like the most famous unfamous person. So I've always and I think been you like it that way. Well, you wouldn't mind some famous famous. Yeah, too. it would be nice. <laughs> I like the stuff that comes with it. I'm I'm cool to walk around and be who I am and be right. okay with who I am. Yeah. I would like the trap. Some of the trappings could come my way. Like it's cool to come in here because they always march me right over to the smooth jazz station. And for like 25 years, I would be, and no diss to smooth jazz, but I would be in those stations looking over at the cool stations where everybody's having fun. Like looking through the window. Like CD 101.9 up here. We miss, I miss it. Is it gone? It's gone. CD 101.9. Smooth jazz is gone off the radio. That's crazy. And obviously the legend WBLS is still there too. Yeah. But, That's really, know. I didn't know that. I feel like a lot of what we hear right now, 10 years from now, is going to go right in that type of format. Musically. Absolutely. Give us an example of what, when you say what we hear right now. I feel like at some point, smooth jazz was like Quiet Storm. Remember Vaughn? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vaughn used Vaughn to Harper, do like yeah. the, yeah, he used to do the, the, the Quiet Storm. And that was like. Al Jarreau, Marcus Miller, David Sanborn, all like Sade. those. Yeah, Sade. But it it didn't start with singers. It started it started as a kind of a quiet late night format. Vibe, yeah. And then it changed and guys came in that were playing guitar like with drum machine drum machines and George then it kind Benson-ish. of ish. Eh, George Benson was still on the sort of rhythm and blues instrumental tip and right. he was a singer. You know, I mean he had a string of hits. He was like Yeah. He was like Phil Collins at some point. That's right. But then when you switch the smooth jazz to like um, the alto saxophone. Kenny G. Kenny G. Najee. Najee. Najee is still in the rhythm and blues oh, okay. category. Okay. I think there's a there's a delineation that starts in the 90s where Quiet Storm becomes smooth jazz. And then smooth jazz becomes, oh, it's also Steely Dan. And it's also Ambrosia, which mm. is now like Yacht Rock. There's all these right. It's different, all it keeps blending. It keeps blending. That's right. You're saying there's modern music right now that is basically Yacht Rock. I think there's modern music right now which feels like very kind of smoothed out rhythm and blues or pop. music. Like some of the Drake stuff. Like some of the Drake, uh, Giveon, uh, Mooney. Uh, yeah. You know, SZA even. I think 10 years from... I couldn't have imagined that I would be listening to Foreigner as a kid and that would be on a smooth jazz radio station. Right, good point. So I think some of that music is going to transition into like more of an easy listening her, space. Some of the her stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you happy with what you're hearing out here? Like when you hear not vocals? Always. I mean, of course, not always. There's, vocals? 
Uh-oh. Not so much. I mean, I'm a singer and I'm like a, you know, I'm a musician that uses my voice as my instrument. So um, I think there are a lot of really interesting singers out right now. I think that the radio is kind of trapped at the moment in presenting the same 17 things all day. Well, yeah, because radio is trying to get you to not tune out. So right. if they keep you hearing the same thing over and over again, you forget that it's on. Yeah. And then you don't press the button. Yeah, it's like So a, they just keep hypnosis. rolling out. Yes. Yeah. Boom. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that they can then get to a commercial stop set. Right. And play some commercials. Yeah. That's the whole game. Mm -hmm. um, well, the reason I brought up vocals is because Layla is a stickler for vocals. She's, you know, she's, you know, she wants it correct. And it should be. And she's from a house that it was very correct at all the time. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it, she comes by it honestly. Yeah, it's true. It's I mean, there are people that are not the greatest vocalists that I love to listen to sing. There are people that write their own material that I love to listen to sing. There are there are some tenants that you can't uh, get around. Like you have to be on pitch. That's just very important. That's, if you can do it without the auto tune, then that's a bonus. Right. You know. Um, and what about tone? Tone is important. I don't hear much tone. T tone right now is homogenized because everybody's going through the, basically the same chain in Pro Tools or GarageBand that makes you all sound the same. And it's actually stripping the vibrato from people and giving it this false, it's very bad what's happening. And that's changing people, that's changing the consumer's sound palette and acceptability of shit that's bad is Absolutely. what you're saying. Yeah, it's kind of making your ear get used to, it would be like if they took everything and tuned it up a half step and then 20 years from now, that would be the norm. So right now, this is that's what the norm is, that everything is homogenized. Well, it's sort of like, I could liken it to sing-songy rap, rap. What, what, is, what, is, what, is, yeah. what is essentially what the genre has 75% of it's become. And you'll hear a record where someone sing rapping and you'll be like, this, this, pretty, this guy's pretty good. And then I stop for a second and go, is this guy pretty good? Right, right, I don't even right. know what the fuck they're doing. I don't right. know if this guy's good. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're not singing that well. They're not rapping that well. They're doing something. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a... They're mel they're, it's melody-ish. Yeah, there's melody. Yeah. There's It's music, I guess. I can remember, like, the first time I heard Nelly, I thought, oh, that's interesting. The way he is kind of rapping and singing. That's interesting, but that's a whole genre. Now. Yeah, absolutely. And remember, Domino, Ghetto Jam. Never forget oh, the yeah. Ghetto Jams yeah. about to yeah. slam. And that's he's definitely singing that whole song, basically, and rapping. And even Farside was singing. Farside yeah. was singing. See, but the difference is what you're saying here now are songs that are good. But yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. That's Relatively. They, so, <sighs> I love Ghetto Jam. Ghetto Jam, I wasn't like one the for side, me. So. I know, of course you did. It was too commercial. I didn't like Ghetto Jam. You, you, once, I got it. I understood it by Once it hits a certain level, Ebro had to write it off. Whereas I would go, <laughs> it was huge, but I still loved it. Ghetto Jam just felt <laughs> right. To jam. Yeah, it had humor. I mean, the, the notes song. from the Miggity Me. I think that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Layla, I want to play your version yes. with your dad of this Christmas. Thank you. Do that. Uh, I also want to play the first song. I mean, I had the biggest crush, man, when this joint hit BET back in the day. Something. Oh, you oh. <sighs> I remember, Ooh. man, when that joint hit BET. Every yo, me and all my friends was like, Layla Hathaway. What? I, I got something right. It's, it's just it's something. It's just something. Mm -hmm. Psh. Man. That's the record I won my first Grammy on, too, 25 years later. Right. Just Why 25 wait, years wait, later? What? So I recorded that record. Brenda Russell wrote that record with David Foster. Mm. And Andre Fisher, who was the drummer for... This is for people, real weird nerds. This I'm is nerd, nerd now. Let's go. Cool. 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 I want to hear So Andre Fisher was the drummer for Rufus. Okay. With Shaka Khan. And he took me uh, on my first record and introduced me to all these songwriters. I went and got this record from Brenda Russell and David Foster called it something. I recorded it. She had recorded it and they shelved the record. She was at A&M. And then in 2014, we redid that record with a band called Snarky Puppy and we won a Grammy for that version. Interesting. I yeah. never knew this. Wow. Well, I want to play. You never heard one. that Snarky Puppy I never version? heard Snarky Puppy. Where I'm singing a chord? Never. Really? Really? I never oh. heard it. <laughs> I miss a lot of your work. and I, I understand. I think a lot of people do. <laughs> and I can understand when you're mad at me about it. If I'm, I'm, not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Layla Hathaway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> she's the greatest. Um, Layla, I, I, I don't say this lightly because I'm a big snob. 
You don't have a podcast, do you? No, I I kind of had a podcast at one point uh, over COVID, where when most people had a podcast but, right. <laughs> or you a know, cooking show. You should point. you should stick with that though. You think so? I think your personality is incredibly endearing and charming, but also snarky. And I could see you being like, oh, dry, talking that, oh, talking that, yeah, yeah, talk shit. She'll also, talk shit. you have incredible music knowledge and depth. Yeah. And also, I don't know if you know this, your last name's pretty cool. People are aware, Thank you know you. what I mean? So, I've heard that. And yeah. I'm sure you have tons of stories. And you got stories, you're behind the scenes of, music. I have like, a lot of stories. You're, like you said, like you're famous, but you're also behind the scenes. So right. you got a lot of shit there. I would, I would. All right, I, I'm going to check it out. I would then. consider it. We you have one called Jazz Nerds. Ooh. <laughs> or just what music nerds. Maybe there's probably one of those already. Yeah. How many good. podcasts are there? Let's that's what, there's well, a that's thousand probably, podcasts. That's the thousand. Hundreds of thousands. There's thousand. many. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands, yeah. yeah. But yours, I think, would be good. Well, thank you. I mean, the whole scam with podcasts, I think it is, is that there's these industries that have made pe everyone believe they should have a podcast. Yeah. So there's like all this equipment you could buy. Yeah, that's our new theory is that. Right. So the, elect so the you electronic can get the microphone makers have been like, ooh, right. new market. Yeah. Right. Make everyone think they should Headphone, record. Headphone, mic, yeah. Road everything. and shore right. are the reason that yes. we are stuck with these podcasts. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Thank you, Layla. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Donnie sorry. Hathaway, a song for you. I just got one last question. Yeah. Because I want to play that song. One of my favorite okay. songs. Okay. Uh, who is the song for? Well, my you know, here's the thing. Donny Hathaway had a knack of taking a song and just putting it in his pocket and walking away with it. He did not write that song. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who that song was Got written it. for. I know that I, I imagine that he sang it for my mom because he sang it a lot of those songs right. for my mom. And my mom sang on some of those records, too. Um, but he's he's famous for a lot of the songs that he wrote, but sometimes he's even more famous for the, the records that he didn't write. Right. You know, like the records with Roberta or the theme song to Maud, you know, um, a lot of records. I have the same sort of thing about my career as well. Right. Do, what is your favorite sample of uh, that somebody has you not a cover, but a sample that you've heard like, oh, they, they did that. Daddy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Like Kanye sampled it the other day and then went to the Alex Jones show on some bullshit. But I thought that was a good sample of the record. Which? Um, Someday Will I Be Free. Right. Mm -hmm. um, That's been done a, a few times, right? Yeah, a lot of people have done that. A lot of people have done the ghetto. Yeah. Um, Little Ghetto Boy. So Little sure. Ghetto Boy. And the Chronic album was done so well. Yeah, there's a lot. I've... I, honestly, not many days go by where I'm listening to the radio or watching TV that I don't hear my dad. Somewhere on a wow. record or a, his hands or a piece of his vocal because I always can figure that out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the great Layla Hathaway. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your having time. me. It's only been can, like a thousand years. A thousand. Can you come, come back more often? Yeah, I will. Yeah, you should. I will. And and musically, can you keep us, you know? I'm you? trying. I'm working. There's there's so many records you probably just don't even. I don't. It's I'm working all year. So you're enjoying things. You're I love happy. it. I love what I do. Love it. Layla Hathaway, ladies Thanks, and gentlemen, Layla. give it up. Thank Go you. check out that new disc Christmas that's out right now everywhere, but specifically on Apple Music.